Hello friends, welcome to Tamil Boomi's one another video. We've been doing more uh, big data videos. Today, one of the important topic we are going to see. Uh, what is it? Like everybody is learning big data in institute or some uh, own learning from doing the YouTube everywhere. But one thing they're stuck with is the project. That's a big uh, barrier between them and the job. Whenever they go to the interview, they're not able to explain the project properly. They're not explain what is the steps they were, what are the things they did. So I just want to today make a video today on that topic and tell you and give you some guidance how to do the video, what are the things I expected, what you can do to make a better video in big data, sorry, better project in big data so that you can uh, like uh, kind of switch the jobs. That's what today video is about and watch till the end and share your comments and if you want to improve something and if you want to put more videos on this topic, just let me know. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> today the project which we are going to see, it's going to be in uh, uh, streaming. Okay, so let's assume you have a project, you are working in a manufacturing industry and there are many machines that are generating the events. So machines are generating, constantly generating events and it's going to send it to you so that your system can process. That's what the requirement is. The company, they wants to do, <clears throat> they want to digitalize the entire thing. Let's assume. Uh, they have around 300 to 400 machines, okay? Uh, assume it is a cutting machine or a big factory, anything you can assume. Maybe it's a, it's a ship company, anything you can assume. That's a manufacturing thing. And once the, the uh, every machine is equipped with some sort of sensors, like we have in our cars, uh, we have everything in day-to-day -day world. So every machine sensor will be sending the signals to one hub. In that hub, you will be able to see, okay, whether the machine is running fine or not, whether the machine is having any uh, fault or whether any issues are happening inside the machine. Like that, you will be able to understand from the signal. So far, so good. So next thing is, <coughs> each machine can have multiple uh, sensors. So one car can have multiple sensors like that. There are 300 machines. Let's assume each machine is having around 50 sensors. Okay. So now if you just multiply 300 into 50, how much we are getting? <clears throat> Around, yeah, correct. 15,000 sensors is generating the events. Generating the events. So now 15,000 events you want to generate in real time and you wanted to check it. Generating the events. So 50,000 uh, e like sensor is constantly generating and giving you the outputs and you are receiving the signals and checking that and whether uh, make sure that it's working fine or not. If you find any anomalies or any issues, you have to find out that machine. That's what the project is all about. Let's assume the manufacturing company wants to do this. So what we can propose is we can propose that big data ecosystem for the same. There are many other ways to do it as well, but for our project sake and how we want to do it, we are going to propose big data. Okay, in big data, what are the tools we can use for this? Uh, first of all, uh, there are going to be 15,000 uh, machine generating events are generating and we need to monitor this in live. So better we will go with the Spark streaming. Okay. <clears throat> We will we can use sparse streaming for this purpose and after generating what we wanted to understand whether we wanted to know if there is any failure if any uh, signal is sent and that signal is having anything issue any issue let's say the uh, triple x code should come always if it is going to uh, x x then that means that is something fault is happening based on that error code we need to understand okay what is the issue and we wanted to show it into that some kind of um, uh, some kind of dashboards okay so this is what is about machines a lot of machines are there assume these are machines and uh, everything is generating the events using the sensors one is generating multiple events so everything can generate and uh, <clears throat> everything through network it will reach to one hub and we wanted to see okay each event okay any issues how many machines are running fine how many is uh, failure all this information we wanted to see for this, we wanted to set up a big data project. Fine, now we've decided, okay, we'll use the Spark streaming for this. Now, the next thing is, how? what are the other components we need to use, whether just Spark streaming is fine. How do we connect Spark streaming to the uh, sensors and how do we get the data? Those are the th things always important when you're kickstarting the project or when you're designing the project itself. That are the main points we need to discuss. First, let's assume uh, 
you have some kind of uh, running Python code or something which can push the data to Spark Streaming. That is fine. But what happens is sometimes, let's say your Spark Streaming job is always running. It is running 24 by 7. Okay, all the time it is up and running. And for some cluster issue, your cluster is failed or something. Due to that, that uh, job is failed for one hour. One hour, the job is not running. Your Spark Streaming job is not running. In that time, what happens? Whatever the but still the uh, fifteen thousand events, fifteen thousand sensors are still generating the data. Okay, but you are losing of one hour of data. That is a huge amount of data. You are going without monitoring. So in order to avoid this, you can have some kind of backup system. What is that called? Exactly here we can use Kafka for this purpose. So using Kafka, what we can do is. You just uh, write some code in Python or Scala or uh, anything. Just write a Kafka producer and then push the data into Kafka. Now the data is in Kafka. Kafka is kind of a temporary storage where you can keep the data up to n number of days, which you decide. And normally, it's defaultly, it's seven days of uh, retention period is there. Seven days will be there. Okay, fine. Now, uh, just put the data into Kafka first. After the Kafka, <coughs> from Kafka, you can use Spark Streaming to fetch the data. Fetch the data. So this is how you can use this. Okay. Uh, so from here, you just write Python program or something, any network program to push the data to Kafka. That is our first component we are going to be adding. <coughs> Kafka. I added Kafka here. So the data, all the data will be coming here. So Kafka, it will be storing the data as a topics. Okay, you just need to learn Kafka more about it. I have one more video for that. You can watch it out. So Kafka stores the data as a topic and in the topic can be partitioned. So the way you look at it, uh, Kafka, okay, I'll have one one topic, like multi n number of topic. Um, maybe I can have uh, like uh, 300 machines, I can have 300 topics. Each uh, For each uh, particular sensor, I can have one particular uh, partitions okay because the partitions whatever the data in partition that will be order you will be getting out of the Kafka so the, that's all the minute details you need to go into once you, the design is fixed now you design okay let's use the Kafka you decide and uh, the data is coming that's what our project is all about after Kafka we are using spark streaming to read the data and do some processing here we will be reading each event and while reading the event itself what we will do what kind of operation we'll be doing in Spark Streaming that you have to think and decide. For our project sake, what we will be doing is, let's, the events are coming into the, into our Spark Streaming. We will just read the event and understand, okay, what is the status code? Status code it is having. And if this status code means this error or no, no, like success. Success means working fine. Either of this can happen. So if the error is happening, then you have to alert the user. So what you can do is you can write into one of the table after Spark Streaming. You can write it to one of the table. <clears throat> it can be HPS means NoSQL or Oracle. Oracle is kind of expensive, so we can go with stick with NoSQL because we are going to big data environment. You can use it store into HPS, and here you can have two tables, or you can use some identifiers to understand whether it's an error or success like that. Based on that, you can build the UI on top of it. On top of which ways you can build a UI or you can use Phonix also. Uh, like those things you can come across. So this is what exactly what our project will be doing. We will fetch the data from the uh, sensors and posting, posting into Kafka. From Kafka, we'll reading into Spark Streaming. And using the Spark Streaming, we'll analyze the data. We will understand, okay, this is where is success or failure. Immediately, we'll store it into, if it is success means, we'll store into HBase success table. If it is failure means, we'll store into HBase failure table. That's what the process we will be doing through this project. And after that, what happens? After HBase, um, there can be, after Spark Streaming, there will be HBase. The data is stored into here. <clears throat> All right. Let me just name it so that you understand. <laughs> Sorry about the mess of the program. Spark Streaming. After that, what you're doing is HBase. Data is stored here. So till here, it will always happening. This is streaming. Kafka, the data will be pushed into Kafka. It starts streaming read and space will be stored. After that's the UI part. Okay. Now, always, obviously, we are programmers. We can go and check the data. But as uh, like business and clients, they want to see it in the dashboard so that they can use it. Okay. So the trend you can show how much failures happened in past month that you can show or what is the live 
you can see it's like just like the cricket scorecard like whether they score like how much run they made and what is the graph how what's his career everything is mentioned in the dashboard same like this you can make, create one dashboard by using the hbase on back end and front end you can do the create the dashboard and uh, that's the technology you can uh, use that but here one main thing is if you are looking for big data engineer or data engineer your part is mainly doing this part this part is done by big data engineer mainly okay so you have to focus more on this part because you are focusing yourself as a data engineer fine that will be taken care by ui or sometimes in small companies that will also done by a data engineer as well but for now we'll just focus on this part so if you are focusing for big data engineer you have to be thorough on each and every part of this project let's assume uh, we are saying okay 500 uh, uh, like sensors and we are pushing the data into kafka and streaming you have to do one part of poc on this same exact uh, things you have to find some of the uh, like uh, some free streaming apis i can share you some and some streaming apis you need to find and do everything in your local itself in your machine this is everything can, you can install in your machine vm or just by cloud labs or some you know, cloud provider who can support you using that you can implement it yourself and see it that way you will get more confidence okay this is how the project works and that okay once you build that <coughs> one thing i wanted to do is okay you have you may not never seen how the data flows from the sensor to the kafka so you have to understand and you have to visualize before you go for an interview that's very important i'll show you uh, basically mostly what happens is it will be coming as a json format okay it will be come as a json format you will be having some apis uh, is this like kind of uh, ignite so this is a json json is nothing but a format how the data flows okay xml is also similar so this is how json data looks like it starts with curly brace and ends with curly brace and inside you will have all the information and what this is having this is a um, like what is that cluster um json inside json that is called nested json okay this is nested json this is also one json inside json so this is also possible so this having device id and command sensor data whether the data this actual data using this kind of uh, code you can understand whether the code, uh, your project is running fine or not okay and all this information you can find it out in this link i'll put this link in the video description and like this you will get the status from each uh, node so what you have to do what your spark streaming program has to do is it has to read this information from kafka streaming and then it has to convert into json object okay there are a lot of applications available uh, it is very common json is mostly used there you can use it and convert it into the mm, parse that and creating into uh, r like what is it rdd and uh, in that you create it as a object okay json object and then you play with it that is easier in that way so that you will be able to convert it whatever you want you want play with it you can understand you can just uh, work on the data like that way okay so this is a basics of the project and i just i just summarized here what is the project is all about first sensor generate the data from the machine it generates json events at a particular intervals okay that's what it does like 5 seconds or 2 seconds like that does then the event is stored into kafka topics okay we are uh, store uh, like some kind of producer like python or something kafka producer stores the data into topic sparse streaming job reads the data so after that sparse streaming job our uh, we written on sparse streaming that is reading the data parse the event in json object using python or scala any programming language we are doing which great after that we are creating rdd using that object and doing the uh, like operation whatever is intended to do spark streaming job reads the event and processes and check if the status is fine if the uh, status is found then store into hbase issue table if it is a failure store into that failure table success means store into success tables and dashboard creates on top of hbase using for this information so this is the entire project which you can utilize but one more thing you have to understand is okay now i listed you all these tools and what is the flow you can use work around what you have to do is more work on this one is okay how is the data is getting generated what is actual data what are the other things we are having and i'm saying store it into kafka topic what is the kafka fails what is the sparse streaming fails what if the hbase fails and what is the performance issue uh, 15000 is coming so how much intervals we are getting for one hour how much data we are getting all this minute details you have to do the homework you have to write it down so that you can make a better project and present it into the interviewer and you don't have to do the same exactly these things you can just change it also that is also possible 
it's also very fine okay but this kind of projects is many companies are using and uh, this will be useful if you also uh, like understood and do the homework on this side okay and just work on your laptop install hps kafka and try to work on these things so that you will be able to achieve the interview perspective to, which is which is stopping many people i saw many people i'm getting many calls like they're, they're not able to clear the interview they want a, a like project help and all but anyway i hope this video you're finding it useful and these are the next steps uh, okay and uh, you don't have to do the entire thing just tell the data will be for your for your sake the data will be available in kafka anyway so i'll read the data and i developed the spark streaming and put it into hbase this part you have to be very clear like how much partitions you used in kafka why the decision is taken and what is the spark streaming batch duration and what is the benefit of it and <clears throat> for performance what you did did you do repartition or did you use broadcast variables all those things that has to come into the picture for this project so in this project you need to know end to end that's what uh, everybody expects if i'm an interviewer that's what i expect too and uh, that's pretty much it and i'll leave all this information in this video description and yeah if you like this video and if you want more information related to this similar to this just uh, let me know uh, let me know in the comment and this is my whatsapp number and here's my mail id if you have any doubts you can always ping me and message me and we are also taking online classes in big data so if you are interested just let us know thank you and we'll see you in the next video thank you thanks for watching this if you came this far yeah thanks a lot